This week, Drew Nelson and I interview Steve Boyk, owner of Frontline Cigars, based out of the western suburbs of Chicago. He started the business in 2019. It's a great story. Also includes a 501c3 profit story, uh, benefiting military, first responders, and uh, police officers. You definitely want to tune into this episode. Uh, and also... In our second segment, we interview Bill DeLisi. Bill will provide us insight on the current state of Cuban cigars, Cuban cigar business. He will also discuss the past 15 years of the Cuban cigar industry. We have some business projections with sauces. So excited about that conversation as well. And what to expect over the Cuban cigar industry over the next three to five years. Episode 357 of Stogie Geeks starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote... Drew, who is remote over in Texas? Look at you. You got some Stogie Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stogie Geeks, episode 357. I am your host, Joe Hozempa. Super excited to uh, be here. We have a extremely packed show today. In our first segment, we have a chance to interview Steve Boyk, owner of Frontline, C- Frontline Cigars. And in our second segment, we have Bill DeLisi. We're going to talk about the current state of Cuban uh, cigars and cigar business. And um, that's a very interesting uh, topic as well. And um, I want to introduce you to the little dark hair kid from Texas, Mr. Drew Galvin. Good afternoon, guys. How y'all doing? We are doing excellent. What's going we on, are, Drew? We are doing awesome. excellent. So, uh, very excited. Uh, the weeks fly by. It feels like last week I was here uh, talking to you, and here we are again, and and that's what happens. Yeah. It's, Truth. It's crazy. Yeah, looking looking forward to this interview with Steve. Yeah. Uh, you know, looking forward to that. So, uh, yeah, man, let's uh, let's get on with it. It's uh, humid over here in Texas. Enjoying this. Uh, Upcoming weekend with a lot of rain. Looks like it. No golf. I was ready to go today, but uh, they've already told us that there's lightning in the air, so we have to push back our tea time if we want to do that, which won't be till 4:30 this evening. And I'm not doing that. There you go. There you go. I, we yeah. can't golf yet, even though it's 60 degrees right here today. It's going to be 30 tomorrow. So I was going to say the problems <laughs> he has down in Texas. All right, the problems <laughs> you have down in Texas. Right. Absolutely. And to my right is the internet sensation, Mr. Nelson DeMello. What's going on, Stogie Geeks? Happy to be here. Happy to see Steve joining us. Looking forward to an interesting interview. Absolutely. I want to introduce our next guest. And as soon as we introduce our next guest, we do have to interrupt our next guest. But I don't want to leave him hanging for uh, 20 minutes before we get to him. As we have uh, some breaking news here in Stogie Geeks. So you want to stay tuned uh, over the next five minutes and listen to this uh, very industry-moving Uh, news and uh, very uh, shift changing uh, as well but I want to introduce you to a gentleman his name is Steve Boyk he's the owner of Frontline Cigars they are based out of the western suburbs of Chicago he started the business in 2019 off of off of a cigar that they used to hand out at events 
for their cigar club. The name of that club was the Blue Line Cigar Club. That was established in 2017. The purpose of that club was to help out injured or sick police officers who needed help. Fast forward to 2019, he started the charity after raising funds for seven police officers and their families. From that, he started Help the Heroes Foundation, which is a 501c3, to help injured or sick first, responded, first responders and military. And then he started that cigar business, Frontline Cigars. Shortly after that there, fast forwarding back and forth to 2019, and both of those projects work hand in hand, and Steve is going to take us through that process. Steve, welcome to Stogie Geeks. Thank you for having me. How was my intro? Okay. Your intro was beautiful. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When you had sent me some of the information that you do with, with the Help the Heroes Foundation and First Responders Military, for me personally, my father, um, you know, is retired Navy and had passed at 55 years old in 2015. Um, so it's like one of those charities that like really like like hit home and I can tell you from being a navy brat that sometimes um you know some people don't realize the sacrifices that don't get talked about on news headlines and all of that stuff. So I personally want to thank you for that um and for for that because like, like every community kind of needs something like that. I know the navy calls that like an on like an ombudsman so, like, if your husband or wife or, or significant other gets deployed on the ship, the ombudsman of the ship helps the families who are transitioning uh, through, if they're in, like, f when I say foreign land, I mean, like, they've been stationed somewhere else and it's yeah. not their home domestic and whatnot. And it's just so needed. And we are going to get a chance to talk about that. And I don't want to take anything away from your interview, but I do have to interrupt your interview Lucky for you or unlucky for you, you are wrapped up in a saga that, <laughs> that questions my Joe Zempa integrity with McAuliffe Cigars. And if you notice, and then it questioned our integrity here at Stogie Geeks in their relationship with McAuliffe Cigars. And if you're following a press release over this past week, there has been some press release that has been talked about and Nelson is going to take us through that process but Steve you look like you were going to say something so go for it I actually caught wind of this press release yesterday and yeah. me personally as a retailer I was carrying McAuliffe cigars mm. and when they came out I called the wholesaler that I deal with and I asked them do you know about this and they said no I said, so I can continue buying McAuliffe cigars from you. And they said, yes. So me personally, I huh. think this is a publicity stunt because if you look on numerous websites that are online that don't have brick and mortars, they're still carrying McAuliffe cigars. Per Brian, I heard yesterday that no other retailer online got a letter from McAllis lawyer. So publicity stunt? Possibly. That's just my opinion. You know something? As you know, Stogie Geeks who watch and listen, and thank you on behalf of uh, Nelson and Drew and myself, we thank you for listening. You know that our shows are unscripted. It's just my style. Uh, Steve can tell you that you know I ask for a uh, snippet of who you are if I don't know who you are. And um, I read it on the show, and we go forth from there. And I want to shelve your comment because I think we're going to have a theme here, uh, <laughs> there. Because my, teg my integrity, my personal integrity, and the integrity of this show in the cigar industry was questioned with one of those cease and desist letters there. And, um, you know, I've also started a hashtag integrity movement. It's only me. And, and my two listeners, you know, it's my mom and my brother, right? And 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 you know, and and uh, and that and that's where we go from there. But let's let's get to the point. This is like the first Story Geeks episode where we're gonna get to all of the points, yeah, because we're, we're like so cramped for time. Yeah, Nelson, let's, take us through the process. Yeah, let's get a press in, in. release was there, and Nelson actually has a statement 
that is quoted with permission from Brian at the club. So go for it. Yep. So uh, this actually, I Drew Hit sent this to me uh, yesterday, and I pretty sure the press release came out yesterday and essentially it is it's a press release announcing that they sent a cease and desist letter to the Provada club uh the Provada cigar club and asking them to no longer sell McAuliffe cigars and alleging that they're selling unauthorized cigars so that's that's the <laughs> press release in a nutshell i reached out to brian from Provada club he is super accessible I'm a member of the club. I'm not going to hide that. Um, so am I. A, b- a big fan of what he does. So Brian was kind <clears throat> enough to reply. I asked him for a quote, and he did give me a quote. So um, without further ado, I'm going to read the quote from Brian Desden from Provada Cigar Club. I think it's gross that a company would use the beautiful culture and community Provada Cigar Club has fostered through the years of nurture for quick notoriety and publicity. Who puts out a press release to say they are sending someone a cease and desist letter? If that does not make their true intentions obvious, I'm not sure what would. I also found it amusing that they took this time to make claims about how good they are for brick and mortar. Of all the companies in our great industry to pull the you are not good for brick and mortar with, Provada Cigar Club was definitely a poor choice to target. LCA is Provada. For those that don't know, the LCA is the Limited Cigar Association, which is specific to um, brick-and-mortar shops. You can only pick up the LCA cigars in brick-and-mortar shops. As we all know, the Limited Cigar Association is one of the most exciting things to happen to brick-and-mortars in a very long time. The LCA not only supports B&Ms financially, but we share our entire Provada family with these local shops, 300 of them across the nation. For some shops, this program kept them alive during the early stages of lockdowns. What other company does this? Ask any online cigar company to share the entire book of business with local shops and see what they say. No one cares more about cigar culture than Pravada and its community. Remember, Pravada, the LCA, these are not me, meaning Brian. These are our members collectively. We are the next generation of cigar smokers, and whoever wants to use this movement for quick press will most certainly be shooting themselves in the foot. And if you ever shot yourself in the foot, you know how hard it is, uh, how hard it can be to walk around like that. End quote. There you go. Drew, shoot. Shooting themselves in the foot? Yeah, I don't, you know, like I said, I, I, I have to agree with Brian. That's why I sent you guys that as soon as that came across uh, my feed. I, you know, again, here we go. Uh, this person or persons over at uh, McAuliffe have obviously not done their research, have not looked at the whole entire picture and uh, have decided to do this move. And, you know, it's, it's only going to hurt, I believe you know, yeah. one side and that, you know, that, that will be remain to be seen. So in my opinion, it's, it's going to be a wait and see. Uh, it is in a, uh, I hate to say it, but I'll say it, but it's a, it's a Kardashian moment. You know, what, what can I do now to get the public to pay attention to me? And this is one of them. So unfortunately for them, they're going to, uh, you know, probably see a lot of, uh, uh, emails come down their shoot and, People are just going to let them know, you know, that's that wasn't a cool move or that wasn't, a, a, you know, something that yeah. needed to be done. So, cool. That's it for me. They're here in my backyard. I know where they're at. I know, I know the, you know, I know they're here in Texas with us. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with Brian <laughs> on this one. Okay, Nelson, shoot. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not going to speculate on on why they did this, but I do think just from a business decision it wasn't a great business decision um pravada has nothing but good reviews a great following um i mean i've talked to other brands that are they know brian and they never had a problem we're all in this together in the cigar industry um, so I, I was kind of surprised to re, re and it, the whole thing that it was, I, it does go up my ass that it was a, a press release that you're sending yes. a cease and desist letter. That seems like just almost childish to me mm. that you were doing that. 
Like you're you're announcing yeah. that you're sending a cease and desist well, he, letter. Well, he sent they McAuliffe Scott sent Story Geeks. Uh, we're terminating our relationship with you and take off the you know all the stuff and whatnot. Yeah, and, yeah. And there you go. Funny thing is they they sent it to Paul, which it's cool. I mean, he owns the company. I get it. You know what I mean? But then but then they question my integrity. And it's because of 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 my integrity, not the integrity of the host. All the co-hosts of the show, Joe Hosempa's integrity was questioned. So my comment, first of all, I will save my Brian's comment because I really, really want to get to the Frontline interview. He just happened to book a show that this came out. And yeah. <laughs> Steve, lucky <laughs> Sorry, for you. Steve. I'm lucky for you. A lot of people are going to watch the episode, right? <laughs> right. So just, just there. Yeah. So my, my integrity was questioned in the industry, okay? And I have... Uh, multiple times made references to that so my only comment is you know something my comment is twofold number one Brian's quote hits home when he says in some instances the Provada Club in the, the LCA in in his organization kept brick and mortars alive and I can tell you I can look at the microphone and speak to the microphone and look into this camera and I can tell you I have a customer right now in March 12th of 2021, where the Provider Club is still, regardless of COVID, keeping new people going into his brick and mortar yeah. because of the services from the Provider Club. And I cannot wait to when we interview Brian to have him come on the show and, just, and, and, and thank him personally. Because this is a customer out of my outside business in the tobacco field in 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 the 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 life of that provider club in the LCA has injected a life into that s culture of that cigar shop and that's only one experience of that I know I'm sure if I had more bandwidth and 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 and, and we got letters to come in everybody like uh, hats off to them so that's my first point my second point I am not going to comment about the situation I'll save it for another show all I got to say is, McAuliffe, you know you have an open mic here anytime, anytime you want to. I will even make accommodations if Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Times. And if you want to come and, and, and talk about my integrity, you have an open mic. I'm Joe H. at StogieGeeks.com. We know where I stand. Now, without further yeah. ado, Steve, please change the tone of this interview <laughs> and tell us and tell us about frontline cigars so frontline cigars was like you said uh based out of the chicago land area western suburbs uh were online only um it was developed in 2019 uh so rewind 2017 2016 i got sick I was out of work for three months, not getting paid. Uh, I've been a police officer for the last 15 years. Unfortunately, I cannot be a police officer anymore uh, due to some circumstances that are beyond my control. Um, so in 2016, I got sick, came back to work. Uh, we were on midnights. I meet up with a bunch of guys at Dunkin' Donuts for coffee. Go figure, right? And uh, <laughs> we were just shooting the shit and he goes i'm going to start a cigar club and i go for what and he goes i want to help out injured or sick cops here you were not getting paid for three months let's do something about this I said okay what do you want to call it we were just going back and forth i go how about the blue line cigar club I said that works so we came up with the blue line cigar club on facebook uh in a year and a half we donated over sixty thousand dollars to injured or sick cops wow. so a total of total of seven families and uh it was getting too much for me so we started a charity charity got introduced in probably march april may of 2019 and it's called help the heroes foundation it's a 501c3 helping out injured or sick first responders and military personnel just recently we donated over 100 masks to the philadelphia fire department um there was another fire department in virginia where we donated goggles safety goggles and masks uh we've donated probably over five to ten gallons of 
um, hand sanitizer to the Cook County Sheriff's Department, Lysol, uh, pretty much every department out there that needed something contacted us and no questions asked, boom, it was gone. You had it. So that's what we do. We, we, we try to help out those that serve on the front lines. But you, you had the, the Blue Line Cigar Club, right? Yes. And then and then how did you transition from there? To the To cigars? where you are today, yeah. So we had a cigar that was made for the club called the Blue Line Cigar Club Cigar. And it just so happened to be this cigar that I'm holding right now, that I'm smoking right now. So I have a friend who has been in the business since 2015. His name is Raphael. He owns Don Rafa Cigars. Don Rafa Cigars is based out of Chicago as well. Uh, he has his flavored line, which is from the Dominican Republic. And he just recently, within the last two years, bought a factory in Nicaragua. And he is the one that makes my Defender cigar and will be making my cigars here on forward. So every cigar that you see coming from Frontline Cigars will be made at Tabacalera La Familia in Esteli, Nicaragua. So, how, so we were, how, we were given we we were given this cigar out as, basically we would have events and give the cigars away. Yeah. So, I actually had Max Benitez who was working for, uh, seven oh eight cigars at the time. He was a rep for them. He's been in in the industry about ten years, and he goes, "This cigar is really good. Maybe you should think about getting your license and selling this." So I brought the. Brought the whole spiel to my wife, who is a computer junkie, kind of like you guys. And uh, she has a lot of background in developing websites and doing coding and analytics and all that good stuff. The back-end work of a business. And I begged her for six months. And finally, she caved. Um, and in June of 2019, Frontline Cigars was created. Wow. So so Valerie was a big part of launching that. Yeah. I mean, if it wasn't for Val, Frontline Cigars wouldn't be here. I have a question. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask you. So, what, uh, Steve, so what do you, how many, how many uh, uh, offerings do you have at this time? So, Blue, Blue, Blue Line comes in two Vitolas, Toro and Robusto. And the Defender comes in four Vitolas were out of the Robusto because they sold within a month. So we had 20 bundles, 500 cigars gone in a month. So we have, right now we have the Corona, Toro, and Goro available on our website, FrontlineCigars.com. We have the Blue Line available in Robusto and Toro. And we also mm -hmm. carry other brands, other name brands, other brands that people might have not heard of. We just mm -hmm. we, we support those companies that support us. And mm -hmm. what I mean with that those companies that support us, we only really have a personal relationship with seven brands. Nice. Uh, do you on the frontline six shooter uh, cigar sampler? Uh, does one get in that case uh, uh, all the Vitolas that you offer in the two uh, profiles that you have? No, the uh, the six shooter is six Toro cigars in an extra large uh -huh. Herfador. so it it holds six Toros. So it's the oh, okay. uh, the the six Blue Line Toros. And an uh -huh. extra large, an extra large travel case. Oh, okay, nice. Joe Nelson, sure. Uh, I was going to ask how you ended up getting it. I saw, for example, that you had Nova. Uh, you mentioned earlier um, you have other brands as well. You know what? You obviously started with with the Blue Line Cigar Club. You had the Blue Line Cigars. Um, you know, talk about how when you when you finally built the website and you get on, what made you branch out into selling? Was it just a business decision to drive more revenue or, you know, you mentioned the seven brands that, that you're loyal to. Yeah. So I have a distributor that is a wholesaler that is literally 10 minutes from me. So I could pick up pretty much 
almost anything, but not anything meaning like if I want uh, Espinosa comfortably numb, which we carry, I have to go through a online wholesale distributor who I have been buying from them for the last two years. I actually use two of two wholesalers online, and I use the host. I have two wholesalers here in Illinois that I uh, frequently go to to get other cigars that aren't on that website or on those websites. You have the business processes put in place, for sure, thanks to whoever developed your website and through the vendors that you're currently dealing with and the current vendor who you're dealing with for your cigars. Um, next logical step in business is to bring it to scale, right? So, in other words, maybe it's 2500 or 5,000 cigars um, for the next offering or whichever. I'm making the numbers up, right? Um, what are your intentions moving forward? Because looking at this product, I think product-wise, it's, it's, it's got functionality, right? You can order online. You, go to the, you can participate in the charity. Proceeds are going to go um, to, to, to the, the, the 501c3. Um, concept is 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 it's functional right are you looking to bring it to scale and and you know blow it up blow it up or are you looking to kind of still keep it at the club level it's really not at the i wouldn't consider it at the club level we have about a thousand email subscribers mm -hmm. it's not really at the club level it's grown since then i mean we're up 41 percent from last year nice oh wow. okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's it, it's crazy um we have just within the last year 375,000 clicks on our website nice yeah i nice. mean yeah. it's 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 all it's all about seo um if you do your seo right you can be on the top of google people yep. don't know you know there's there's certain keywords that play into Google, which I've learned from my wife. Um, I hear about it every day. Yep. <laughs> you, you, well, this is you, right in your wheelhouse, Joe, right? Yep. This yeah, is this is, is you, Joe's wheelhouse. Uh, that's what I do. <laughs> so, so if you go, if, if you Google Amandola Cigars, she basically plays a game. She wants to be above Amandola. She wants to be above Rockefeller. She wants to be above Don Rafa. She wants to be above all the brands that we carry. It's a game to her. So when you want a cigar, if you're looking for a cigar like Nova, you click Nova. We want to be in that top three. Yeah, you, you want to if, participate in that action. So let me rephrase the question then. Are you looking to transition into a potential brick and mortar? Or are you looking it, to, 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 to stay online? So I want to rephrase my question. You've clearly graduated from, from, from that club level. So, yeah, absolutely. So are you going to you next logical step, brick and mortar, or are you going to it's, expand online? That logo would look cool on a building. <laughs> yeah, it, it's <laughs> buildings are expensive. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In 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 Illinois, with the taxes being about thirty six percent, I don't think it would be a a smart move to do a brick and mortar here. Wow. Not saying that we can't do a brick and mortar somewhere else. Not saying that we can't pick up and move and go somewhere else. But right now, the online's working. I mean, yep. the FDA regulations aren't really. You know, they were talking about getting away with online sales, and you know the FDA has a lot more issues dealing with other things than cigars right now. Sure. So I really don't think that Frontline Cigars or any other online company is really focused on what the FDA is doing because, truthfully, they have more on their plate than dealing with us online retailers. You know, you brought up a good point. I've been um, exercising that and saying that in my previous position behind a microphone when I had Cigar Club Radio here in the Providence Metro in 2014. And, um, you know, Story Geeks, I've been here since 2017. And I've been saying that, like, they're going to kick the can down the road. I've been saying that countless times. Drew has heard it. I hear, and I always hear other vendors who we interview say, well, you really don't know because it could get lumped in. The only way I could see it 
that statement being retracted somehow is if it's uh, OT, OTP, other tobacco products, is lumped into some other bill, like a COVID stimulus package. Right, they try well, to sneak something yeah, they, in. They, they, they just try to sneak that in. But, you know, you also bring up a good point, right? Chicago, tax is 36%. So, you know, at 36 for, for you Story Geeks listeners who are listening and might not understand, like, okay, well, what does that number mean? Basically, if the cigar is $10... 36% of the $10 there is taxed there, unless there's a wholesale clause in the state. Some of them have it, some of them don't, etc. But, you know, or if if they if it's wholesale price and they bought it at $5 because they're keystone in the $10 in a brick and mortar shop, then they're going to pay 35 cents, uh, I'm sorry, 36% of the $5. So it's either 36% of the $5 or 36% of the $10, depending on how the, the legislature is written. It goes per state. And in some states, it goes per zip code, right? And it's getting trickier and trickier. So, you know, you, you, you bring up an interesting point, right? I'm online. I got processes in place. I'm helping people. Why don't I just grow from here? Right on. You know? And then, you know, and every once in a while, hey, if you're in the Chicago area, once a year, in a post-COVID era, you throw a big-ass party with a tent. And thank everyone for participating in your program. <laughs> you know what I mean? Have you, have you done that in the past, Steve? Have you held any, any frontline um, events in the Chicago area? Yeah, actually, we, uh, we have a home shop called, uh, he's probably watching right now. Shout out to Earl over at Ultimate Cigar. Earl, <laughs> love you, brother. Um, Hi, I've Earl. Known Earl. I've known Earl probably all my life. Cool. And Earl's a retired canine officer from a village here locally. Uh, he runs the shop during the day. We do most of our events there. Recently, my business partner, Jack, a uh, 29-year veteran uh, commander of a local police department here. Love you, Jack. What's up, sugar? We call each other sugar, baby. I had to put that in there. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> He's probably behind his desk right now laughing his ass off. Um, Jack was actually at Karma Cigar Bar in Indiana, and they had an event. They just bought... A warehouse next to them and integrated it into a uh, dude it, it is going to be extraordinary they it's 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 got to be 30,000 square feet and he's going to turn it into a lounge like a party area and just the pictures of it is oh my and the, the, they carry our cigars um they are very supportive of first responders so karma cigar bar indiana ultimate cigar bar in villa park illinois those are the two main cigar lounges that we visit there are not you know when i first started this business i did a lot of foot traffic here in the chicago land area so you go into a lounge you give them the blue line cigar you tell them where it's from you give them the blend and they look at you like you're uh, like you're like you're speaking a different language. Well, we never heard of this, sir. We'll try it out. We'll let you know. You never hear back from. Them. Yeah, so you were so, hustling. We we visited probably twenty cigar lounges here in the Chicago land area, and we're probably in five. Yeah. I mean, and then you get calls later on, in you know, a couple of years later, hey, we'd like to carry your cigar. Well, I wasn't good enough for you a, a year and a half ago. Why am I good now? Don't shoot so, your foot. We started, I'm very don't but, shoot your foot. We started but, the episode like that. <laughs> but Joe, I'm very I'm I'm very loyal. I do. I'm very loyal, and I'm I'm one of those guys that if you don't give a shit about me now, or if you don't give a shit about me before, why give a shit about me now? I understand your point. I can I can make an argument. I I'm agree. I'm a loyal person as well. Um, sometimes it's a flaw, right? Uh, you know. Uh, sometimes I often think to myself, uh, very often for 20 change years now, like loyalty <laughs> is like failure to accept the truth. Sometimes it gets to a point, right? But you know, y y in business, it's all timing, right? Yeah. So in other words, if you went to their door the first time and they said no, for whatever reason, you know, maybe that brick and mortar was struggling. Maybe they didn't want to gamble and take a chance on an unknown cigar. Or well, maybe, I went to that. Or, or maybe went, they, they're like a lot of brick and mortar cigar shop owners I know. Maybe they didn't like it, but 
they need to realize like if you don't like it, it could sell still. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we talk about that on the show. You know what I mean? Like, you know. So yeah. so you know, maybe you might want to do a, a round two and uh we, well funny you, funny you say that. All right. We were at, we were actually going to Ultimate Cigar <coughs> excuse me. Uh I don't know, Ray Cigar Enthusiast. I don't know if you follow him on uh, Instagram or YouTube. But if anybody did out of all of us, it'd be Nelson, because he's the internet sensation. <laughs> so Ray actually went from Florida here to visit lounges. He wanted to come to Chicago, check out the food, which, you know, Chicago pizza is better than New York. Pardon me. So anyway, he came here. We went to that second lounge that I visited the first time. And I gave them my cigar again. And he pretty much told me we're still not interested. Yep. Well, you know, hey, it does happen. Drew, you have a question? Yeah. What's up? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, just uh, dive in further into the uh, into the uh, uh, foundations. I, I see that you also are uh, in cahoots with the uh, uh, Cigar for Warriors Uh Active Heroes Foundation and then Justin's final Justin's final mission. Um, you getting a little bit more on that? So Cigars for Warriors, we had contacted them because we wanted to do buy a cigar for a soldier. So mm-hmm. I'm going to put Storm on blast, and yep. I contacted him and said we want to do cigars for warriors on our website where someone could purchase a cigar. For a soldier, I was a donation center at the time. So you pay, I think it's a little bit less than around eight bucks. You buy that cigar, free shipping. I put that cigar in a bag. When I accumulate up to 50 to 100 cigars, I send them out to Ocala, Florida for Cigars for Warriors. He said, let me talk to my board. We never do something like that. We never did anything like that. Huh. I said, okay. So I didn't get much publicity after they said yes until Hiram and Solomon came out and said, we're doing a discounted rate for this and it's going to Cigars for Warriors. So mm. do I still support Cigars for Warriors? Yes. Did I get the accolades or the announcements saying that we're doing purchase a cigar for a soldier? No. Sure. And that's kind of what you know kind of hurts me. I'm I'm here doing all this or we're doing all this for military and first responders and yet you can't put it out there that we're doing cigar for a soldier because we're a small company. I mean I you know there's there's a lot of companies I put on blast. One in particular was um Psycho 7, uh, Ventura Cigars. At the time, Michael Giannini was the GM. And uh-huh. I put them on blast on Instagram. Next thing you know, I get a phone call from Michael Giannini. And we're best friends. It's been about a year. The guy brought me under his, brought me under his wing, and we talk weekly. The guy is fantastic. If anybody hasn't met him, the guy has a heart of gold. He was in 100%. He said, anything you need, we're here for you. So he would send me swag and stuff to give away with the purchase of those cigars from Ventura. And Michael has been great. Kevin from Rockefeller, great. Amendola cigars, great. Hiram and Solomon. I mean, I had, like I said, I have seven brands that I am loyal to. And these are people that respect what we're doing. They are behind us 100%, and I can't thank them enough for the support that they have given to us in letting us carry their cigars. Now, we still are a um, donation center for Cigars for Warriors. I'm not going to stop that. Just because I'm not getting the publicity from them, I'm still going to do it. Sure. I mean, you know, I'm I'm loyal. Uh, Justin's final mission, activeheroes.org. Uh Go hand in hand. Activeheroes.org is a um, a center in Kentucky where military veterans with PTSD or anxiety or suicidal ideologies can go 
and they have cabins there. Those cabins right. are to furnish the families of the military personnel with mental disabilities, I guess you could say, and they get the help that they need. And we are a sponsor of activeheroes.org. And if you buy a Justin's Final Mission t-shirt off of our website, which I believe is $15.98, 100% of the profits go to activeheroes.org. We do not get a penny. So every cigar for a soldier that's purchased, $2 goes to activeheroes.org. Justin's Final Mission. So Justin Fitch was a Army veteran. Came home, had some suicidal ideologies, um, went to Active Heroes, helped them out with the different things that they needed, and they started Justin's Final Mission. Justin's Final Mission was basically giving a donation to activeheroes.org in Justin's name to help build these cabins. Now, how did I come across that? There's a YouTube community out there. Um, it's the E. Bomi channel and Band E. Brew Reviews. His name is Eric Bomi. He's out of Minnesota. He is very outspoken, very Second Amendment, very, okay. you know where I'm going, very, very, yep, very Republican. So he does his, yeah. he does his brew reviews. I've been on Eric's brew reviews a couple times. Uh, Eric was one of our first influencers. He's a cigar smoker. He loves guns. I love guns. I love beer. And it was just, it was the match made in heaven. So Eric, Jeff Kitchens from California, love you guys. Uh, if it wasn't for them, you know, part of, part of the frontline cigars community wouldn't be established. And I, I, I have to thank Eric. I have to thank Jeff, um, Christine, Eric's wife, the whole YouTube community that they have supports us and I support them. They are the ones that showed us Justin's final mission in activeheroes.org. So we just put in a donation about two or three months ago, $300 towards Active Heroes. And, and we will continue to give money to Active Heroes because of just the message that they send. They, they want to help just like we want to help. Right. Exactly. I told I, I told you guys in the beginning this this isn't about money. This is about giving back. The money will come. Um, our business is going into its third year. Usually, an online business, small business like this, doesn't really gain traction until like the fifth or sixth year. So, money's coming in, and I'm still going to donate to all these charities because that's what we believe in. That's what our main goal is: to help out injured or sick first responders and military. So about a year ago, um, I was diagnosed with PTSD. And I'm telling you this because there are a lot of people out there with PTSD, with anxiety, with suicidal ideologies that are afraid to talk. We just had two police officers here in the Chicagoland area kill themselves because of mental related issues that they were having, that they did not talk to anybody. If you out there are listening and you suffer from anxiety, now anxiety could be anything. It could be your heart pounding out of your chest. It can be you shaking. You on your floor one morning, curled up in the fetal position, on the phone with cop line, crying your eyes out because you don't know what the fuck's going on. That happened to me. If you go on my Instagram page, March 4th, 2020, I was crying 30 minutes before that Instagram TV video because I couldn't pay $100 for a car battery. I had the police at my house. There's some incident that happened outside. I called the police. It just didn't look good. And they came to my house. Well, I was in my basement crying. Guy comes out the door. I noticed a CIT pin, which is crisis intervention. I am crisis intervention certified. So I saw that pin. He goes, can I talk to you? I said, no. And he goes, are you okay? I said, no. And he goes, what's going on? And I said, could you come down in the basement? He goes, well, I really don't want to. I go, look, I'm a policeman. 
Um, I'm off the job right now. Can you please come talk to me? We came in the basement. I told him everything that was going on. He calmed me down. He left the house. I did my video. And March 4th, you could see the wellness in my eyes as I'm doing the video. I was literally, you know, a year ago at almost wit's end. I wouldn't say wit's end because I didn't have any ideas of hurting myself because I have three kids, a wife that love me very much. The cigar community has been awesome. And I wasn't getting, getting the support from my police department. And there's a lot of cops out there that aren't getting the support from their police departments. They might have stuff on the wall that says, uh, if you need help, call this number. Well, I call that number. Right. Eight hours later, they contacted me. Eight hours later. Who wants to wait eight hours later when you're down in the dumps? You don't know what's going on. And you call me eight hours later and want to talk to me? I told her on the phone, if I was suicidal, I would have been dead. But fortunately enough, I wasn't suicidal. And I talked to her for about 10 minutes and told her I didn't need her service anymore because cop line actually helped me that day find a counselor within five minutes. And I'm here today, medicated. Um, you know, I, I can't work as a police officer anymore, but that's okay because I have frontline cigars. I have guys like you. I have the cigar mm -hmm. community that's welcomed me with open arms. I have stickers on this wall behind me that represent all the people that support us. I have stickers all throughout this basement with people that support us. I don't need a police yeah, we... department. I don't need a police department supporting me because you know what? I have enough support right here. Right. I was going to say that here in Texas, we have a large, you know, we, as you know, as a lot of people know, we have a large uh, military uh, family members here in, in the state of Texas. And, you know, one thing that a lot of the uh, cigar lounges do is that, you know, if you're a military, ex-military, it doesn't matter, front line, you know, like, you know, a frontline person, and you need a place to come and, and have a cigar and maybe just kick back and relax. I can't tell you the support that that is given here. It's so phenomenal. I mean, we, you know, I know they're not looking for any handout, but we end up buying, you know, we'd like to buy them a cigar and thank them for their service or whatever it is that they're in on the front lines uh, from medical all the way down to the, you know, uh, you know, uh, fire department and whatnot, everybody in between. So it's pretty cool here because we have these we have these uh, specialized boxes or lockers that is dedicated to a service member and. Anytime they they, you know, they need a cigar, we we like to invite them in and they reach into that uh, locker, grab a cigar, and go have a seat and relax. And the camaraderie that you meet with the other folks that are there in the lounge at the time—I mean, there's so many people there to talk to—and it's it's great. It's a great it's a great support system. Uh, I think a lot of people that think about lounges are a little intimidated when they go in there. They're you know, especially if it's they haven't had that experience. They walk in. And they see a bunch of other men and women, and uh, it's it's great. It's great to share uh, stories of family and 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 things that are going around that um, that they need some kind of uh, uh, you know just someone to listen you know listen to them and whatnot. So uh, yeah, if I definitely uh, do. You, do you have anybody here in Texas that you're uh, working with a, a brick and mortar? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, Smokers Alibi. Smoker's Alibi. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I, I believe it's Laredo, Texas. They carry our cigars. Yeah. Great people. Mm -hmm. um, they have a mobile cigar lounge. It's actually a, um, a refurbished mm -hmm. cigar uh, lounge created from a school bus. Jeez. Mm -hmm. And they, they carry our cigars. We are, you know, they're only in Texas. Uh, we're in a yeah. bunch of stores in Illinois. We're in Indiana at Karma. Um, Via Hante Stogie Road in South Carolina carries our cigars online. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So, yeah, I mean, we have, we're, we're, we're slowly getting out there. Okay. But yeah, I'll see what I, you know, I, I like to share with some of my uh, cigar lounges that I, that I interact with and uh, make them aware of your programs and whatnot and, and see if they can, uh, you know, support you in that endeavor as well. And I appreciate yeah, that. they yeah, they have a pretty awesome bus. <laughs> it's a mobile yeah. bus that a school bus that they turn into a smoking lounge. 
Uh, we also have uh, we have many lakes here in Texas. A lot of people don't know that, and we actually have, I think, like three uh, pontoons that are smoking pontoons. <laughs> so it's pretty cool to have those and uh, and whatnot. So uh, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely like to you know share your information with some of the uh, other lounge owners and 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 and, and uh, they support other endeavors with a lot of frontline um, uh, person personnel. And uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely show your information around. So, uh, get you more uh, 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 known here in Texas. Well, shout out to uh, Mick, Adam, and John Harper who are watching right now. Love you guys. They are part of my Zoom group. I started oh, okay. a Zoom group April 23rd of 2020 for cigar smokers who suffer from PTSD, anxiety, and any mental mm -hmm. disorder. Um, it was basically first responders and military. We have 47 members. We meet up three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And these guys are like family. We, yeah. I mean, it's like clockwork, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, every time on Zoom. Just yesterday, John Harper's uh, wife had a birthday, and two of us bought her a birthday present and had it sent to her, and she opened it live on Live on the Zoom group, and the Zoom group is just basically somewhere, you know, obviously we can't go to lounges, we can't meet up, we live in different states, so we have a Zoom group, and we just shoot the shit, talk sports, smoke cigars, and just enjoy each other's company. Everything, Very awesome. Everything you just said, Steve, I was going to recommend before Drew spoke. My first step was... For your next step, it, with the approval of whoever you're seeking your personal help with, um, you'd be a great candidate to start a group. <laughs> that was my advice. So like saying, hey, yeah. man, you, yeah. you, you, you know, with, with, with the help of you know, whoever you're seeking help with um, through, through your journey and your, what's going on with you, um, starting a group would, would be uh, great therapy for you and I'm super happy that you um, don't have to take my advice and you're, and you're already doing it um, you know and, and I think that that's really really cool you, you've touched upon you, you know your, your story just just hits ho like home for me my, my, I have a little brother who's 10 years younger than me and he's an active duty police officer well, thank and, you for his service. You know, and one hundred percent. You know, I don't know. It's, I don't know what whatever his name is. His thank name, you. His name is Matt, right? Matt. Yeah. Matt. Matt, be safe. Yes. We, we got your six, bro. Just yeah. watch, watch your six. You know, and it's it's like one of those things where you know I try to call him every day, and with my life, it turns into every other day, which is pretty good. And I always try to, you know, um, get his six right, <laughs> and, and make sure that that you know he's he's all set. And he, you know, tells me some stories, and and I try to let him talk about it. You know, he's young. You know what I mean? Well, he's always gonna be my little brother, right? He, you know, uh, he's in his thirties, right? <laughs> but yeah. you know, it's like, and and I've watched him go through that journey, and it's it's crazy that what police officers have to go through um, on a daily basis or an, even an hourly basis. Um, you also mentioned that you had uh, someone uh, who was in canine. I actually have had experience in uh, June of uh, 2099 uh, of traveling with the Miami PD canine. Uh, 2099? No. Yeah, I was just going to say, what, what's <laughs> 1999? You, you said 2099. I, did, I probably did. I'm not drinking. That's probably my problem. All right. Um, you know, uh, in, 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 in 1999, uh, I traveled with the Miami PD for two overnights, uh, third shift. Um, and one of them was canine. And I actually had the opportunity to live, well, to bunker. Like, we stayed at one of my friends from, from high school. Uh, his sister married a Miami PD officer and moved down to, to uh, just outside of Miami. Yeah. And so we stayed at their house. And it's amazing to see the relationship between the canine police officer and the dog. Oh, wow. Like, yeah. and, and it's amazing 
like when you know he would jump in the shower, <clears> the dog be like by the door, to, like it's time to work. And when that yeah. dog puts that vest on, that's a different freaking dog than what I saw yeah. hanging around the house. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's it's I yeah. could just go on. I could go on. Well, Steve's got to come back on the show anyway because, you know, we could just go on forever with those stories. But the sacrifice that I've seen him go through in just those two overnights 20 years ago. Now, I had no intentions of becoming a police officer. Uh, the short story of it was obviously my best friend's brother-in-law was a Miami PD, and this was a pre-9-11 era, right? And he's like, hey, you want to do a ride in lawn? I'm like, hell yeah, dude, let's go. Like, right. you know what I mean? You know, and, and, in and, Miami? <laughs> uh, dude, I, can, I could spend like four hours telling you like night one and another four hours telling you like nut, nut night two. Holy and crap. the lessons. And, and keep in mind, right? I, I'm going, I'm coming out of it, out of a, I have no intentions to do this for a living. And my takeaway of those nights were just, just, just crazy. And so I've seen the sacrifice just on forty-eight hour level, right? right? Just a sliver. It's not even right. And and then they have to go through, you know, police officers work. You know, most of them. It's not a nine to five, right? It's a, I get called in. You have a wraparound shift. You get mandated. You got paperwork to fill out because you found a freaking uh, I don't know the code for it, but a dead body, right? <laughs> you, you know, you you know, you 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 got to fill out paperwork. You got you, you, just the paperwork. After your shift is is ridiculous, and yeah. so getting a sliver of that in 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 your story hits home, right? I worry about that with with my little brother. You know what I mean? I yeah. worry about that with with military families. I mean, you know, my my father came back from Desert Storm, and long, long story painless, he, he died at fifty five. Like he just couldn't get it together. You know what I mean? And 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 what it does to the family and the help that's out there, and and it just it just you you know it, just listening to you this will probably be like one of the story geek episodes that i you know don't talk <laughs> you know because it's like your your message for your business and your business platform is set and i see nothing but growth for you yeah i'm i i come from a an air air force based family my Grandfather was World War One. Mm -hmm. My uncle was World War Two, and my dad played played four years of baseball in the Air Force. He was, you know, he was drafted from Shures High School here in Chicago uh, by the uh, San Francisco, or I'm sorry, the New York Giants before they were the San Francisco Giants. Went to the Air Force, was a uh, mechanic engineer. Did clean up with the planes and all that stuff but played four years of baseball and the one thing i would want to this day if if i was asked who would you want to smoke a cigar with anybody in this world for one hour it would be my dad because he's the one that started me on this yep. and i would love for him to try my cigars although he might think they're shit because all he smoked was grenadiers <laughs> but you know that, that's okay i just i, yeah. I want him to uh, i want him i want him to touch my cigar yeah, my That's my same my, my my father's humidor is on my desk, um, at work here in in studio. Nick, yeah, you know, we're we're in studio, but next suite over is our office space. Um, as we just don't like live in studio and drink and smoke cigars and and go home, we have have a a, a vast. A uh, slew of responsibilities here at Security Weekly and G Unit Studios, um, but um, you know it's it, it. My dad's humidor is is here, and it's it's just empty. Yeah, my like, dad. Like I won't fill it. You know what my, I mean? Because it's just that's just it's just it, he's with me. You know, and I have a picture of my, my son on his humidor. You know, so yeah, my my dad's uh, glass. I don't know what you call it. Those glass the jar. Yeah, the jar. The jar. I got a glass yeah, jar. jar. It's on my. It's on. It's on my top shelf, and he used to put all his Cuban cigars in there. It's on my top shelf, empty, with my logo on the outside, and I keep it empty. The only time I'm going to fill it is if I get a box of Grenadiers. I'll put them in there. I'll tell you a story that I've never said here on Story Geeks about my dad, and. Um, <laughs> One of the brand he liked his his cigars, but one of the brands that he absolutely freaking loved, right? Here goes my reputation, right? <laughs> right? Um, was was Don Tiki's, 
right? He would get the Don Tiki's. Egg. And the only reason why I liked him because of the price. Like, you know, I like this. I like that. And he would smoke good cigars, too. But he was like a saver. He would keep them for special occasions. And the Don Tiki's would be like the regulars. <laughs> and when I opened up my uh, brick and mortar shop that I used to own here called Spotted Dog Cigar Company here in the province metro, he was like, I know the only reason why you opened that cigar company so you can, cause you can get away from those Don Tiki's. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, dude, like, you gotta, like, what the hell are you smoking that for? Like, every day, like, dude, like, smoke the good stuff that you have in your humor. Like, nah, special occasion, special occasion. I'm like, dude, every day is a special occasion. Like, I've said that from the time I was, like, 19 years old. Like, every day is a special occasion. It's like, true. Like, every day, like, you know, and yep. lo and behold, you know, I'm pretty young. I'm in my 40s, <laughs> and, and he's not here. And, you know, it's like every day is a special occasion. Yeah, you know? so back back to uh, this whole canine thing. My brother actually was a canine decoy for 25 years. He started off with the Cook County Sheriff's Police helping out the chief. Um, he's... He passed about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, my brother was helping him out train the canine dogs for Cook County, ended up uh, doing his own business, um, did a lot of bite work for local police departments, uh, a lot of decoy work, a lot of training for local police departments, moved to Wisconsin, got a job out there with uh, injured military personnel in helping them get acquainted with a companion dog. And mm -hmm. these companion dogs were anywhere from Rottweilers to Shepherds to Dutch Malinois. And I have a video where he is helping out a guy who literally has no limbs at all. Jesus. Mm. And the guy's got, he's, he's teaching the guy how to have the dog sit, stay, and all the dog wants to do is roll over and watch him scratch his belly be a dog and it was it, it was it was a dutch male in one i remember in one in in the video my brother had stopped and looked up and said thank you god because that's all he wanted to do was train dogs and help people and all i want to do is sell cigars and help people so our right. family is right on of, brother yeah so i i got canine stories for 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 days just well, like you steve a couple things right uh quick programming note um, schedule wise, I want to have you on late April, early May to kind of do a part two of this, right? Uh, had this been a regular day where we would do a interview in Stogies of the Week, I probably would have did a two part interview in 86 Stogies of the Week, but we do have another interview scheduled and I want to do an, an, a, a part two with you and um, I want to do a uh, I, I want to smoke cigars and help people segment and I want to get story geek listeners more involved and i want to talk a little bit more about what we started today i think it's very special drew would you agree oh yeah most definitely you would like to have you back here uh next month later next month and then, yeah, yeah we definitely do that and uh you know i'm gonna get some frontline cigars in my hands just to just to have an experience with them and then uh share that share that with my people well, here in texas for sure well, 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 well wait I, Nelson was supposed to give you guys cigars, or did he? Hort Smoking one right now, but logistically, Drew lives in Texas, and Nelson has had yeah. a bad forty-eight hours. So no, I get it. I get it. So <laughs> real, real, no, no, no. real quick, the real logistics quick. didn't work. And if Nelson sent them to me to mail to Drew, he it'd probably be July. So, so just, <laughs> just real quick. I know we talked before the show. I have a giveaway, and yes. I have a discount code that ends tonight. For you guys. Awesome. For everybody that's watching, for everybody that tunes in, use the code Stogie Geeks, all one word, all lowercase, 15% off select cigars, and all frontline logoed apparel and mugs, koozies, whatever you want to call them. Sweet. Frontline, frontline cups. So when I say select cigars, Rockefeller. Amendola, Hiram and Solomon, and United are not in that uh, discount. Everything else discounted fifteen percent off. Stogie Geeks, um, how many how many viewers you got right now? Well, uh, I don't know about the live, but it'll be a little, it'll be uh, just north of uh, ten thousand. Well, by, here li by live Monday. we <laughs> li li live we got six right now. There so my dad 
smoked a cigar. I said it a couple minutes ago. You could... First one to name the cigar, I'll give you something from Frontline Cigars. Oh, wow. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Uh, S- Steve, thank you for appearing on Story cool. Geeks. I will reach out to you Monday. Yes, thank you, Steve. I, w- I will reach out to you Monday, um, and we'll get that all coordinated for the second interview. Uh, Steve, thank you very much for appearing on Story Geeks. Visit Story Geeks. Visit FrontlineCigars.com. We're going to take a quick break in our second segment. We're talking about the state of the Cuban cigar industry. Stay tuned. 